Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Beloved, you are welcome to God's own elect word and prayer meeting. We are here as elect of God to study the scriptures and to pray. You are most welcome. Hallelujah. You are most welcome. Praise the living God. We are elect of God that come together every morning, Ghana time, four o'clock, to study the scriptures and also pray. And I believe your your you, 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 your life will never be the same when when you choose you choose to join us. Hallelujah. God will welcome on you, especially. Hallelujah. And you 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 will like it. So I want to encourage you. I want to uh, admonish you to join us so that with one accord we'll be able to study the word of God. Mama Ecolina, you are most welcome in Jesus' mighty name. Today, another topic that we are going to treat is very interesting. Very interesting topic. And then the topic is stop worshiping God in vain. Stop worshiping God in vain. Hallelujah. Stop worshiping God in vain. Now, due to some gospels that is being preached to us. Many Christians are worshiping God in vain without their knowledge. Due to some doctrines that being uh, taught to Christians, many Christians of today are worshiping God in vain without their knowledge. And that we will use scriptures to prove what I'm saying. We will use scripture to come out. Hallelujah. To uh, 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 prove what I'm saying. And you understand it. So join us if you only are interested in this topic that you don't want to worship God in vain. That you really want to um, worship God as the Bible tells us to do as the scriptures tells us to do, as God expecting you to do, then you have to, hallelujah, join us to go to the scriptures and find out whether some people or many Christians are worshiping God in vain, as I said, or not. We understand it. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. God richly bless you for being part of us. You are welcome, every one of you. Mama Kofi, uh, Brother Kingdom, Preacher. God bless you for coming. Amen. And every one of you. So let's enter a word, a, a, into the word of prayer. And then before then we move into our Bible studies. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for giving us this great opportunity to come before you once again to study your word and to pray. It is our prayer that Lord my God will have understanding to apply your word rightly in our lives that at the end of the day, we will do what you expect us to do. And our life will be a blessing to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God richly bless you. So as I said, the topic is stop worshiping God in vain. Now, as I said from the beginning, many Christians are worshiping God in vain without their knowledge due to uh, some doctrines, some uh, 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 Gospels we have been listening to and we have been uh, yeah. applying them in our lives. That is what is leading a lot of people into worshipping God without their knowledge or worshipping God in vain without their knowledge. Hallelujah. Let's take our first scripture passage from the book of Matthew chapter 15 verse 3 to 9. And I'm reading. He answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? Tradition. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible with you right there, you can understand, uh, you can underline the tradition, the word tradition. Hallelujah. Verse 4 says, For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother, and he who Curses father or mother, let him be put 
to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profits you might have received from me is a gift to God, then he need not, he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hallelujah. Then he went on and said, Hypocrite, where did Isaiah prophesy about you? Saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandment of men. This is a serious thing. Hallelujah. This is a very serious issue. The thing that was happening in the days of the apostles, uh, in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Pharisees were the big men, the reverence, the, the bishops, the archbishops, and you know, all the titles, they were the people, the Sadducees and those people were holding all those titles. Praise the Lord. And they were handling the word of God this way. According to what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying, was saying that God has commanded that the children or the sons and daughters should honor their parents by giving them gifts. Hallelujah. By giving them gifts. By giving them gifts. And so, but these people, the big men of God in those days, twisted that doctrine and taught the people that you know what? For you to bring your gift to your mother or your father, what you need to do, bring that gift to God and it will be a blessing to you. You have a more blessing. Praise the Lord. When you do that, you, you, you make it to heaven. Praise the Lord. When you do that, you do this. So they taught these people that instead of obeying the commandment of God to honor their mother and fathers by giving them gifts, they said those gifts bring to the house of God and God will bless you. Praise the Lord. So by doing that, they ignore the real commandment of God. Praise the Lord. So, the scripture passage, the whole scripture passage that we read makes us understand that whoever practices the commandment of men taught as doctrine of God, that person is practicing something that by, by that practice, his praise to God is in vain. His worship to God is in vain. His honor to God is in vain. Hallelujah. Why? Because you have disobeyed the commandment of God and doing the commandment of man. And whatever you are doing in the name of God is in vain. Because you are not obedient to the instructions of God due to certain doctrine that you have heard. Praise the Lord. Remember, the Bible says when you, you, offer, you, you stumble in one law, you have stumbled in all. Because the one who said, do, thou shalt not do this, the same person said that. So when you say, I will not kill, but I will steal, that means you are still disobeying the commander. Praise the Lord. And so the fact that these people are trying to obey the doctrine of men, praise the Lord, and this, ignore the commandment of God. God said, whatever they are doing, it is in vain. The Lord Jesus Christ said, they worship God, they do everything in vain. Praise the Lord. And one wonderful thing about this is this, the, the, the doctrine that they, they, they try to teach the people, the doctrine of men that they try to teach the people is attached to the name of God. It sounds good. 
Actually, compare your father to God. Your father, your God is greater than your father. So if your pastor tells you that what you want to give it to your father, bring to God and God will bless you. Uh, if you don't have the, you know, the sound mind, you may think the pastor is telling you a very good thing. Praise the Lord. You may think that a pastor is teaching you the right doctrine. So what they are saying, with whatever you have for your father, your mother, any gift that you have for your mother, your father, bring it to God and God will bless you. And that's what they are living by. And the Lord Jesus Christ was saying that this is the doctrine of men. Praise the Lord. It's a commandment of men taught as if it is the doctrine of God. Commandment of men taught as if it is a doctrine of God. No, this, uh, 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 this is a way of you know, manipulating people, using uh, uh, traditions, teaching traditions in the name of God, teaching your own tradition in the name of God. Praise the Lord. And bringing people under the bondage of tradition, man's, man's commandment. So when uh, 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 traditions of men are, are, are being taught in the name of God, and by that, by so doing, commandment of God is being ignored. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ indicated, that those who are following such doctrines, hallelujah, such doctrines, tradition teaching in the name of God, such doctrines, those who are following such doctrines are blind, following blind leaders. According to the same uh, chapter, Matthew chapter 15, verse, verse 12 down, talk about that. Now, let, let, let me read about this place. It says, when his disciples came and so then, the, then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard these sayings? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus corrected them, that you are teaching uh, doctrines of men attached to the name of God. It sounds like it's part of the things that the children of God should observe. It seems it's a part of things that God is expecting the children of God to observe. This kind of teachings is man-made teachings. It's a doctrine for men and all those who are following them. Hallelujah. They are hypocrites and they are worship and whatever they are doing it's in vain. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ was telling them. And then the, 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 those people became angry. The Pharisees became angry at the Lord Jesus Christ. They were offended. And so the disciples draw the attention of the Lord Jesus Christ to them, to, the, uh, 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 to that, what they are doing. That you see what you said. These people are offended and they are angry at you. And the Lord Jesus Christ responded and said, But he said to them, He answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leash the blind, both will fall into a ditch. That's where the danger aspect of these things we are talking about is. Hallelujah. The danger about these things we are talking about is at this place where somebody uses his own tradition or the tradition of men, teach as doctrine of God, and then uh, uh, influence people to observe as if it's a part of thing God expect us to do. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ, such people are blind and they are leading blinds. Whoever practices such doctrines are, are blind following blind leaders. And that was what going, was going on in the days of the Pharisees, in the days of Jesus Christ. They are teaching things that is not of God, yet they attach the name of the Lord to it. Praise the Lord. And make us as if it's part of things that children of God should practice. Praise the Lord. So there is a lesson we need to learn from this place. That anything, any practice that we are practicing, that you don't see any scripture, hallelujah, supporting it, affirming it, you don't have to involve yourself in it. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Any practice that are being taught that Christians should practice, anything that is being taught that you don't have any fundamental scripture that is approving it, don't involve yourself in it. Don't involve yourself in it. Hallelujah. It's very important. As you end up following blind leaders, you end up following blind leaders. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. We can give an example in our generation, what is happening now. We can give an example about it. For instance, concerning Christmas, Christmas, Christmas is a tradition. It's not a biblical thing. It's a tradition. But they have attached Christ to it. They have attached the birth of Christ to it. They have attached God's name to it. And make it sound like, like doctrine of God. It's just the, the same thing was happening in the days of Pharisees. What they were teaching the men, the people, is not of God. But they attach God to it. To sound like God's, God is expecting them to practice that thing. Praise the Lord. The same thing, this Christmas thing, is a tradition. It's a Roman cult. It's not even God's tradition. It's not even the tra tradition from Moses. Which is the laws of Moses. It is a tradition from Romans. Roman Catholics. Which has nothing to do with Christ. And yet is being taught as doctrine of God in churches. And about 90% of Christians believe in it and practice in it as if God is expecting us to do this. And that's what God Bible calls the doctrine commandment of man taught as doctrine of God. Jesus Christ said they taught, they teach commandment of God. They taught commandment of man as if it's a doctrine of God. And people, people believe in it. We do it. We celebrate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not only Christmas. This Easter thing that they're talking about with their Easter egg, they're creating with some colors and other things. Where does this come from? Where is it coming from? That the Christians are holding on to it and every Easter they will do all kinds of celebration to it, which is not from God. It's been taught as doctrine of God, but it's not from God. They have just attached death of Jesus Christ to it. They have attached the things about God to it, just as the Pharisees were doing. And by that, they disobey the instructions of God. By that, they ignore the instructions of God. Praise the Lord. By that, they ignore the instructions of God. Hallelujah. Now, and uh, uh, the same thing was happening in the early church. These Pharisee believers influenced the church, early church, to go to behave the same way. Hallelujah. To go on the way of their, the, uh, on the way of how they do their things. Now, when, when you read the book of Acts chapter 15, verse 5 talks about Pharisee sect, uh, sects that believe in Jesus Christ and yet they want to live by the law. And so they raise an issue that we should go back to the law. And then apostles rejected, according to verse, verse 10. Hallelujah. Apostles rejected. And in verse 25 shows that the, the apostles wrote a letter to the churches that we are not going to live by the law of Moses. And these Pharisees were not satisfied with what apostles said. They went on, they went ahead and went and taught people. 
praise the Lord, to come out from the law, or they believe in Jesus Christ, yet they should, they should, they should add the law to it. So, these Pharisee believers influenced the church of Galatians, and they began to do the same thing. Praise the Lord. They began to do the same thing. Let's see what happened here. Galatians chapter 1. Apostle Paul, no Galatians, start from 1, 2, 3 to 6. It's the same one letter. But when, no, when it came to our modern time, we divided into chapters. And so when, if you're not careful, you may not understand that chapter 1 is part of uh, the chapter 1 is part of chapter 2 and chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 3. The same thing, chapter, Apostle Paul was addressing the same issue, one issue. It's about the law. How they diverted from the law and they uh, diverted from the faith of Christ and went to the law because of the influence of some people. Praise the Lord. So they are describing the same issue about the law. So let's see what the... Um, Apostle Paul was saying, addressing that issue. Uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. He says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. I marvel. I marvel that you are turning away. Meaning, when you don't focus on living by faith in Christ, and you try to attach anything to it, it means you are turning away from the grace. Hallelujah. You are turning away from the grace. So he said, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to different gospel. To what? Different gospel. It's not to the world. It's not to anything, but the same thing that you are following. Somebody has also brought something into it, which is also a gospel, but not the same gospel. It looks like the, like the, the, the original gospel, but the imitated, imitated one. Praise the Lord. The imitation gospel. Praise the Lord. So we have imitation gospels that are people are following. And by this imitation gospel, you may be worshiping God. You may be praising God. You may be honoring God in vain. Because it's not original. When you, when you use counterfeit money to buy them, hallelujah, whatever you are buying, it will be in vain. Because when, the moment the person gets to know that it's a counterfeit money, whatever you bought is useless. Hallelujah. You take it from your hands. Hallelujah. So, a different gospel was preached to them. This thing, he didn't tell them to go back to the world, but they fixed inside gospel, a certain gospel. That sounds like the same gospel, but different one. Hallelujah. And then he said, which is not another, it's not another gospel, but there are some who trouble you and want to divert you I want to pervert the gospel of Christ. I want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Praise the Lord. Let him be accursed. So there is a curse also placed on those who are preaching. First gospel, another gospel, counterfeit gospel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Imitated gospel. Imitation. Praise the Lord. And Apostle Paul was addressing that, that issue of the people drifting from the truth, drifting from the grace of God, coming out from or diverting from the grace of God into the law into the law and was chapter 2 was addressing the same issue chapter 2 verse 21 it says i do not it say i do not set aside the grace of god for if righteousness comes through the law then christ died in vain he was telling the people who are drafted from the uh from the who are diverted from the the grace of god and then now they want to justify themselves through the law that if Christ died, 
If, if, if righteousness will come from the law, then Christ died in vain. Righteousness, uh, the law could not bring about righteousness. Law, the law could not bring about righteousness. That is why Christ came to die. And when you believe in Christ and you have to live by the law of Christ, but go back to the law, that means Christ died in vain. So whoever believe in the law and that, and for that matter, going back to law, he says that Christ died in vain. Apostle Paul was saying that, uh, was, was addressing that issue. So he went on from to the chapter three and told them that, oh, foolish Galatians, who bewitch you that you should not obey the truth before those, before whose eyes Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to know. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the work, works of the law? Or by the hearing of faith. So he was addressing the issue about the law, law, law. But why? Because the people became Christian, believed in Christ, and received the Holy Spirit baptism, and yet go went back to the law. It's, I was asking myself, what will happen to these people? After they have received the Holy Spirit baptism, speaking in tongues, and then and then prophesying, and do all those things. After they finished doing that, they went back to the law. What will happen to them? Praise the Lord. They may continue speaking in tongues. They may continue seeing visions because the Bible said the gift of God is without re re repentance. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit gives a gift, you do, you, the, he doesn't change it. Praise the Lord. So the, without repentance, he has given to you. And you may continue doing that. You may continue, but at the day, at the day of judgment, you find yourself in trouble. So they may continue speaking in tongues. They may continue seeing visions. They may continue doing all those things. But at the day of judgment, the Lord will tell you that you are not under the grace you are under the law. And so the law condemns you because the law always condemns. Bible says there's no one that can be justified by the law. So those who are under the law are under curse. Praise the Lord. So they may still continue, continue to speak in tongues, seeing visions and all those things. And yet they are not under the law. And they are not under grace. They are under the law. Praise the Lord. Hmm. Mm. So the question is, how did the, how did Apostle Paul know that they have drifted from the law, uh, from the grace, and now now living by the law? How did he know? How did he know? He knew by this Galatians chapter four verse nine. It says, "But now, after you have known God, or rather, are uh, known by God, how is it that you turn again?" To the weak and beggarly element, that is the law, he's talking about the law, to which you desire again to be in bondage. Because at first, when you didn't know God, you are in the bondage of the devil. The devil was the one who taken care of you. And God sent Paul that I'm going to, I'm sending you to the Gentiles so that you take them from the power of the devil, power of Satan, and bring them to the faith. And he fought by Paul obeyed that commandment, went to the Gentiles and went to Galatians, preached to them. They came out from the power of Satan. And after coming up from the power of Satan, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, seeing visions, hearing revelations. After that, they rather went back to the law and get themselves into the bondage of the law. And remember the book of Galatians, he told them, Galatians chapter 4, 4 chapter, uh, verse 10. We are reading for verse 10. It says, want to be unborn. It says, you observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in, in vain. I'm afraid for you. Why? How did he know that they are ten, they have tend to to the law because they were observing days. They were observing seasons. Somebody say, oh, what is wrong with this? That I I want to observe Christmas season. Hallelujah. Celebrate Christmas season to the glory of God. Who told you? If that 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 can work, why Apostle Paul was 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 was, was rebuking them from observing days and seasons? If that thing, God is expecting us to do that. 
Why would Apostle Paul rebuke them for observing seasons? Hallelujah. Praise the living God. If that is the practice of Christians that God is expecting us to do, why would they? Praise the Lord. Why would they? Why would apostles, Apostle Paul rebuke them for doing, for doing that? He said, we are doing this to, to glorify the Lord. We are celebrating Christmas at the birthday of Jesus Christ. Who told you Jesus Christ was, was born on December? Who told you? Who gave you that wrong dates of birth of Jesus Christ? Praise the living God. And Christians of today, all of them are just following this men doctrine. This, this doctrine of men. Where they are following this tradition of men. Hallelujah. Teaching as doctrine of God. Hallelujah. And then that is what the Lord Jesus Christ told the people. That when traditions are being taught as doctrine of God and people are following, all those who are following are blind. They are blind. Following blind leaders. When traditions are taught as doctrine of men, when traditions are taught as doctrine of men and people are following, sorry, sorry, when traditions are taught as doctrine of God, and people are following. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ said, those who are following are blind. Following blind leaders. God doesn't want you to tra teach a, tra a tradition as his doctrine. So that people should follow. So the, 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 the tradition about, about Christmas, which has nothing to do with Christ. And then they, they attach Christ to it. That it was the day of Christ. That uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. And so people should celebrate it. Even Jesus Christ himself, where is it written in the Bible that Jesus Christ celebrated his birthday? Once. Where can you find a Bible that Jesus Christ himself celebrated? Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandment. And the commandment is love your neighbor, love one another as I have loved you. That is commandment. Praise the Lord. Obey my commandment. He never told us that we should do what? We should celebrate his birthday. He never commanded us to do that. He never commanded us to celebrate his birthday. Or the Easter. Easter has nothing to do with the, Christ, the death of Christ. Praise the Lord. It's a different gospel attached to the death of Christ. It's a different gospel attached to the death of Christ. The Lord even did not command us to do, observe it. What he told us to do about his death, that whenever we drink his blood and eat his flesh, we should do it in remembrance of his death and proclaim his death and resurrection. Hallelujah. And he didn't tell us that we should do it that Easter season. The scripture indicates that anytime we want to do it, anytime we do it, any day, so even at the early church, they were doing it daily. Daily, daily, they, they were, they were, they were, they were doing it daily. In the early church, they were not, they were not doing it yearly. Praise the Lord. And we have adopted all this tradition from Roman Catholics. And you know, Roman Catholics are not Christians; they are idol worshippers. That's why they are now trying to change the Bible and then do their own Bible. Praise the Lord. That's why now, now they are joining the other religion, religious bodies together as one church, which is known as Abrahamic, whatever church they are doing. They are not Christians. And they brought out all those things. And other churches are just following. Christians are following. This Christmas, look at what the people are going to do. They are going to celebrate it. In their churches, they are going to bring Christmas colors, whatever uh, they're created with the Christmas colors, and all those things. And they, after you finish, you call yourself a Christian. Paul will, Paul will rebuke you and say, foolish Christians. Paul will say that. Paul will tell you, foolish Christians, who told you that you should disobey the truth? The same thing was happening in those days. Paul rebuked them and said, foolish Galatians, who told you that you should disobey the truth. You observe days, seasons, years. I'm afraid for you. 
I'm afraid. Paul was afraid. Why? Because these people will surely lose their salvation if they don't stop it. Hallelujah. Today is a day of repentance. Repent, all Christians. Every Christian listening to me. And you have been made to believe in holy uh, in the in the Christmas celebration, in the Easter celebration, in observance of, 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 of days and seasons, and even Sunday of uh, Sabbath. All those those things were were are wrong. They are not presents of Christians. They don't observe Sabbath. Christian, why? The Apostle Paul was said you observe days because they were observing Sabbath. They don't observe Sabbath. Whether it be it a, a, a Saturday Sabbath or Sunday Sabbath, they don't observe it. Praise the Lord. And some Christians are now observing Sunday as Sabbath. That's the worst, uh, the worst ever. They should have even gone to the, the original Sabbath, which is the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And these things are happening to the body of Christ. And yet, people believe that when they die, they will go to heaven. How will you go to heaven in this situation? Yet people believe that. It's a delusion. My brothers and sisters, let us face the reality. Let us face the reality because God is not going to judge anybody based on traditional doctrine. He's going to base on the... on the, uh, uh, God's, What am I trying to say? God is not going to judge on anybody based on traditional doctrine. He's going to judge people based on his word. And that's what we are talking about. His word reframes us. His word reframes us from observing days. Put that thing into your mind. His word reframes us from observing seasons. Put that thing into your mind. His, his, his word reframes us from observing years. Put that thing into your mind. Don't try to have an excuse that uh, we are doing this to praise God. We are doing it to, to honor God. Bible, God. The Lord Jesus said, when traditions are being taught as doctrine of God, and the people are observing it. Whatever they are doing, they are doing it in vain. They are worshiping God in vain. They are praising God in vain. They are they are they are, they are honoring God in vain. Whatever they are doing in uh, uh, with their mind, with your heart, that they are doing it to to honor God. The, the Lord Jesus Christ, you are doing it in vain, and you are also hypocrites. The Lord said you are hypocrites. Why? Because you must you have known the truth that word of God does not allow that. And you are trying to overcome, you are trying to overlook the instructions of God and then do something to please God. How can that be possible? Praise the Lord. How can that be possible? We overlook the instructions of God and do something to praise God, to please God. How can that be possible? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How can that be possible? And the whole body of Christ everywhere, almost everybody in the body of Christ have been trapped in this thing. Have been trapped in this thing and they don't know it. Because all the pastors, we are not telling them the truth. They don't know it. Hallelujah. That's what I was telling you. When we were praying about three days ago, the Lord said, this season is a season of the bafflement. If you have known, you have heard about bafflement. It's a demon that has been celebrated by musicians, many musicians. No wonder Christmas songs are very beautiful. They are beautiful songs. Christmas songs are very beautiful. Praise the Lord. And this bafflement was, has been celebrated by many musicians, many, many, many musicians, because a demon, powerful demon, that controls musicians and controls many the religious things, and said this bafflement spirit is a season, is a, a season, is a Christmas season. And all those who are going to celebrate this Christmas, but not this one, that every day Christmas, every time they celebrate Christmas, these people get bondage, get into deeper bondage of this bafflement. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Deeper bondage of this bafflement. Bafflement spirit. No one, the last time, about four days ago, three days, five days ago, I was watching, going to the Facebook and I saw a picture with a goat. Goat, dressed as a man, standing there. With a goat face, goat head. Man with a goat head. That's the bafflement. That's the bafflement. If I've heard of a man with a goat head, that's the bafflement. He has been fighting us here all the time. In the visions and dreams, visions. Hallelujah. He has been fighting us. 
that will speak against Christmas because it's his eighth season. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with Christ. My brothers, my beloved and sisters, this thing has nothing to do with Christ. And don't be deluded into a bondage, into a custody of a demon, a principality caught back from it. Now what the Lord says, praise the Lord. Don't follow doctrines of men taught as doctrines of God. Don't follow such doctrines. Doctrines of men. Things that has nothing to do with God. But they teach and attach God's name to it. Things that a scripture does not say anything about it. But they teach and then attach God's name to it. Those are the doctrines. When you follow them, you end up in bondage of certain prosperity without your knowledge. May the Lord give her the grace. Come, Masi and the broke tali and the Lok Shabe broke ton dalaba Lekaba bozi and the broke kaba Lekabra yaba broke shandilibe Lekabra yaba bozok tandilibe in the name of our Lord Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. So you see Christians of today they will they, will, they, will, they are worshipping God crying, doing all kind of things trying their possible. Some of them are, they are innocent souls. They are innocent souls. They don't know what they are doing. So to them they are doing their best to please God. But because of the doctrines they are holding on to Whatever they are doing is in vain. Whatever they are doing is in vain. May the Lord have mercy on us. In Jesus might and deliver his children from the delusions of the devil. May you open your mouth and give thanks to the Lord for this morning. Name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, Lekaba Zokta de Lekabra Yaba, Lekabra Yandeleba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are praying that every doctrine of men that has been taught as doctrine of God, by which you also follow without your knowledge, may the Lord deliver you from that thing. If by this means you have been captured into certain areas in the realm of the spirit without your knowledge, by God's mercy may the Lord deliver you. For the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. As you have known the truth about this kind of celebrations, you have, as you know the truth about this kind of celebration, if by any means you have celebrated some, and for that matter your soul has been captured into a custody of a demon called Baphomet. May the Lord by his mighty power, may the Lord by his mighty hand deliver you from it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you open up and pray. Christ of Nazareth, I pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, Raikaba, Boyaba, Brok Shandelaba, Lekabra Yaba, Lokaba Zuktaliande, Lekabra Yotandeleba, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Hallelujah. The point that we, 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 we try to make in the whole message is that the Pharisees, hallelujah, were teaching their own doctrine, but they attached the name of the Lord to it. Praise the Lord. The, the God's command, God's command was honor your mother and father by giving them a gift, and then they said that gift bring to God, and you'll be blessed. 
So God's name has been attached to that doctrine that they are teaching. Hallelujah. And by that, they divert the truth. Praise God. Diverted the truth. The same thing is happening. That God said, because Jesus Christ died on the cross and we have become, we have become his children, we don't have to observe days and seasons. Uh, all those things, they are not God's, according to Paul. When you observe them as holy and uh, as holy days and all those things, they, you are making them God's. Praise the Lord. You are making them God's. So don't observe them. That was the, the, the doctrine for us. So Christians don't observe any day. That is why according to Romans chapter 14, Paul, Paul made us understand there are people who consider all days as equal. They are he's talking about the Christians who believe in Jesus. They consider all days are equal. And they say some people observe days as special. They are the Jewish people, Jewish believers. Hallelujah. And he's talking about them. He say everybody should be convinced about whatever he believes. Why? Because those two Jewish people were troubling them with issues about observing days, eating this thing. And so everybody should be convinced about that. So Christians observe all this as equal. And that is the doctrine of sound doctrine of Christians. Hallelujah. But today we have been made to believe that we have to observe certain days. We have to observe certain seasons. We have to observe certain years. And we, we attach God's name to it. We attach Christ's name to it. So in order to disobey the instruction that given to us through Paul, do you get it? So similarly, it's happening. Just as the Pharisees were doing the same thing Christians of today, the pastors are leading us to do the same thing. And by that, Jesus Christ said, those who are teaching those things, hallelujah. They said many pastors have prepared Christmas sermons. <laughs> Very interesting. They have prepared Christmas sermons. And Jesus Christ was born, was there, was born and this and that and that, that which is which no scripture commands us to do all those things. If you want to teach, teach about the birth of Jesus Christ, you can teach it any day. Praise the Lord. You can teach it any day. And they are preparing Christmas sermons and other things to, to, to paint a picture that indeed Jesus Christ was born on December. We have to celebrate his birthday. What kind of uh, uh, human tradition attached to God's thing? And this Bible says when people are following these things, they are blind. They are blind. Following blind leaders. Kamasi and Brokaba, Bok Shandalaba, Brokaba, Lesibo, Rakamande, Lok Shabe, Brokaba, Bok Yaman, Delia. Thank the Lord for delivering you from such blindness. Thank the Lord for delivering you. Many Christians, about 90% are blind. Following blind leaders. Thank the Lord that you have been delivered from Satan in Jesus' mighty name. Masianda, Brokaba, Lekaba, Zoktan Deleba, Lekabra Yaba, Lok Shaman Dalaba, Rekaba, Zoktabe, Lekabra Yaba, Lekama, Zukton Dalaba, Rokaba, Bosuk Taliande, Lekabra Yaba, Lekama, Zuk Taliande Lebe. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Father, we thank you for deliverance of our soul, our spirit from every demon of Baphomet, every demon, every demon, every prosperity, every power in Jesus' mighty name. If by any means, Lord my God, I have celebrated any day, season, Lord my God, that has captured me into anything, my God, any bondage of the spirit in the spiritual realm, Father, by the knowledge of the truth, Father, get me free from that bondage in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, Bo Yaba, Brokama Mama, Lekabra Baba, Rokaba Zotabe, in Jesus' mighty name, Rokaba Baba, in Jesus' name, I pray for you, Saruk, Saruj, uh, from India, I pray for you. May the Lord deliver you from every power of darkness that's set in motion against you. Every satanic power that's a set in motion against you. May the Lord deliver you from it. In Jesus' mighty name, receive deliverance, receive liberation of your soul, spirit, and body from every bondage. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord fight your battles for you. May the Lord deliver your soul from every work of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be liberated. Be liberated, be liberated, be liberated from every bondage of the wicked, uh, 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 wicked one. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
May the Lord God of Israel cause your ministry to grow in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God of Israel cause your ministry to flourish in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that thing into your life. In Jesus, may the Lord give you grace to preach about the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Why should we ever even have a thought that Roman Catholics will introduce something and the Christians should go by? While we know that they are not Christians, they are idol worship, and look at the images and all those things in their temples, they are bowing down to Mary's and then saying to whatever images, and after that, they introduce these things to us and we, we hold on to it. What, what a delusion. Don't we know there's an idol worship thing? Don't we know there's a celebration of idol worship? So if the Lord is telling us that it's, an, it's, a, it's a demon of Bethlehemite that we are worshiping, by celebrating those seasons. Why don't you understand it? Christians, we have to wake up. We have been in darkness for a long time. Jumping in darkness. Celebrating in darkness. Without knowing the truth. Thinking that we are going to heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I always say, if their vision, that their own, their own vision they are saying, Christians vision they are saying, Hallelujah. That we died and they are not going to heaven. They died and they go to hell. Thousand is to one. Praise the Lord. If what they are saying is true, then that will base that will mean that, that will base on the fact that we are not teaching the truth and that we are not living by the truth. May the Lord help us all to live by the truth in Jesus' mighty name. Today is a deliverance from every Christmas celebrator. It's a deliverance from every Easter celebrator. Lord, it's a deliverance from day observation celebrator. Hallelujah, day observation person. May the Lord deliver you. If you have been even observing Sunday as Sabbath, you are also still under a bondage. Because even the Saturday that was original Sabbath, God established the Apostle Paul said they should not. They should not observe it. What about Sunday, Sunday which was established by Roman Catholics? If you observe it as Sabbath, may the Lord deliver you from it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the Lord deliver you from it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the Lord deliver you from it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you be delivered from every observation of day or season or year that has caught you, captured you into a bondage. May the Lord deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and be free from its influence. In Jesus' name. Now I decree blessing upon your life. I decree blessing upon your life. May the Lord save your life from falling into the lake of fire. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord deliver your soul from going into the lake of fire by his new mercy and compassion. May the Lord satisfy you with his new mercy and compassion. Cause his, uh, cause his favor to come upon you. Deliver your soul from the powers of darkness. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his mercy and compassion, may the Lord's beauty come upon you. By his mercy and compassion, may the Lord's glory appear to your children. By his mercy and compassion, may the Lord avenge you, avenge you on the wicked one. Accusations of the devil against you. May the Lord condemn all. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord bless you and bless you. Beyond measure, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God richly, richly bless every one of you. These are the messages the Lord has sent to uh, give to us. He said we should preach about his kingdom. Break down the wrong foundations that the, the, this, the, uh, uh, the, some people, some pastors has laid for, our, for the Christians to follow. May the, Lord, the Lord said has, he sent us go out there to preach about the kingdom. And break down those foundations so that Christians will be set free from all those delusions. And we need a support from you people because we have been here for one good year without working. And we are living only by grace. 
Hallelujah. So for us to transport ourselves into uh, even uh, another place, Hallelujah. It's we will need financial support. And if you believe in this ministry that indeed God is the one who has called us, then Hallelujah. We we we, we will appreciate your support. Hallelujah. I have to stand here as a leader. I have to transport about 50 people from one place to another city. Praise the Lord. A city. To go and live there for maybe, I don't know, how long the Lord wants us to be in that city. To, to proclaim this word of truth. The Lord told us three days ago that this season is the season of Baphomet. We should be fast and go to the cities and begin to preach. To save some of the believers from getting themselves into that bondage, deeper bondage of the Baphomet. That is what we are preparing to hallelujah to do so if there is any support no one has come yet show up yet but we are pleading with you that if there is any support get ready for us so that we can also get ourselves prepared to go as the lord has sent us hallelujah may the lord give you the grace to be a channel of blessing to this move so that the christians will be saved any single soul that will be saved from the bondages of the devil from the bondage of the enemy and that person make into the kingdom of god you will have also your part to share in it. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we are pre preparing ourselves. The people are here. You can see them here. They are right here. Yes, these are the kingdom preachers. There are about 50 people ready to go and preach the gospel. Ready to go and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes, there are about 50 people ready to go and preach the gospel about, about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And these are the people, hallelujah, we are preparing them, getting them ready to go there. Praise the Lord. So your support it will be very important and will be very, very uh, needful, hallelujah, to us. And the Lord will bless you for doing that. In Jesus' mighty name. God richly bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We give glory and honor unto you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for delivering us from all these bondages and these delusions. It's our prayer that, Lord my God, your children will know the truth and come out from the bondages of the devil. And at the end of the day, all of us will be saved. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Mama. Coffee, God bless you. There's another one person. Okay. Uh, Oni, Onikan. Onikan. God bless you. Mama Onikan, God bless you. Uh, um, Irene, God, Mama Irene, God bless you. Um, Kulina, Mama Meg, Brother James, all of you, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. God willing, we shall meet again on tomorrow.